We were wanderers from the beginning. We were bounded only by the earth and the ocean and the sky. Long before Columbus, Indonesian Argonauts in outrigger canoes explored the Western Pacific. People from Borneo settled Madagascar. Egyptians and Libyans circumnavigated Africa. And a great fleet of ocean-going junks from Ming Dynasty China crisscrossed the Indian Ocean, established a base in Zanzibar, rounded the Cape of Good Hope, and entered the Atlantic Ocean. We were hunters and foragers, wanderers on the savannas and the steppes. When the drought was prolonged, or when an unsettling chill lingered in the summer air, our group moved on, sometimes to unknown lands. We sought a better place. Working together, we protected our children. We taught them the skills they would need and the tools. Then, as now, technology was the key to our survival. We invest far off places with a certain romance. The appeal, I suspect, has been meticulously crafted by natural selection as an essential element in our survival. Long summers, mild winters, rich harvests, plentiful game, none of them lasts forever. It is beyond our powers to predict the future. Catastrophic events have a way of sneaking up on us of catching us unaware. Your own life, or your bands, or even your species might be owed to a restless few drawn by a craving they can hardly articulate or understand to undiscovered lands and new worlds. We know now that the planets are not stars, but other worlds gravitationally lashed to the sun. Just as the exploration of the Earth was being completed, we began to recognize it as one world among an uncounted multitude of others, circling the Sun or orbiting the other stars that make up the Milky Way galaxy. Herman Melville in Moby Dick spoke for wanderers in all epochs and meridians. He said, I am tormented with an everlasting itch for things remote. I love to sail forbidden seas. Even if the call of the open road is muted in our time, a central element of the human future lies far beyond the earth.